So uh, by the end of this, this presentation, I plan to teach you guys to do pretty much like this. Uh, it's going to be fun, and let's start. Well, AR fundamentally needs the camera. So before we do any line of code, you should go to the info plist file and then just allow the user with a privacy string, uh, the string uh, value with some message to allow the, us to the user allow you to use the camera. And then you can go for the code. Before you do any code, you should, uh, the first line of code, actually, you should go to import the ARKit, uh, ARKit framework. And then you declare two things. You declare an outlet for the AR scene view and a co uh, constant for, com for the AR, AR world tracking configuration. This is going to pretty much tell your device that uh, it's going to track your device position at all times during the applications. And once you're done that, you just go to your storyboard or your zip file, and then you attach the outlet. And you just go to the VD load method, and you run the section, passing the configuration as a parameter. Once you've done that, you have nothing. You can run the app. You're going to see the camera, but you're going to see the three-dimensional world. The, 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 you're going to see the normal camera, but there's nothing, no objects on this three-dimensional world yet. So you have to apply these objects to the scene. And we're going to do that. First, you have to understand the concept of node. Node, Apple gives us this description, but I prefer to say there's just a place in this three-dimensional world that you can put uh, objects, cameras, lights, everything. So first of all, we need to set a node, and then we set a geometry with textures or not, or just colors, for example. These are the textures that Apple gives us, and you can just drag and drop them from the, from the interface builder, or we can just do by code, like we're going to do on our example. Cool. Uh, just keep going with that code. I created this function called add node. And pretty much what it does is it adds a node, it creates the node, and then sets the position on the scene. And this position is based on where, or the, what we call the world origin, is pretty much where you started the app on your phone. And then you have the node, you pass the, the, the position of the node with a three dimensional vector, SCN vector three. You pass the z axis, the x axis, and the y axis. And we're going to put some geometry to it because the node is transparent. We pass the geometry here of a sphere because, on our example, we're going to put the planet Earth. And uh, we put the radius, the, the measure unit is in meters. I put uh, 0 0.3 meters. And then uh, we have to assess the texture of the, the, the object. So we have diffuse and specular. We have, other, we have other first material properties, but I'm going to focus on these two. Diffuse pretty much is the color of the object, is the color that the object reflects when it's on ambient light. And in specular, is the color that the object reflects when you have a source of light pointing directly to the, uh, to the geometry. So I put the, the, the color that we reflect as blue, as white, and the color at the ambient light as blue, so diffuse and specular. This auto-enable default lighting, default lighting is because we are not setting any source of light uh, separately. So we're going to just say that there was a default lightning coming from the camera, but we're not putting on any zip file. And we add the, the node to the scene by using scene view, scene, root node, add child node. OK, so this is the effect that you're going to have with the diffuse and plus the diffuse plus the specular. You can see that this is a sphere, but you don't have the three-dimensional effect because it looks more like a circle that is spinning to your face conform you walk to your, on the room. On the specular, on the other hand, you just can see a little bit of three-dimensional effect, but it's still not the experience that we are willing to achieve. So I went to this website called solarsystemscope.com, and I downloaded these two textures, one diffuse, one specular. So on the diffuse, you can see that it's like if we have the normal map that we have normally, and the specular, where it's white, is because it's going to reflect something. The water reflects light. The land, it doesn't reflect, so it not, it, it's, it's black, because it's not going to reflect nothing. So we apply these two, these two textures, just like before, but instead using uicolor.blue or uicolor.white, we just set the string literal for the image file. And you can see the difference here without specular and with specular. The three-dimensional effect now, it's much, much better. But still, uh, there is one thing to be a solar system. We have to add an action to it, to spin. So uh, once you've done the whole code that we just started, uh, you can add the, the action by loading a SCN action. You can also use the zip file to drag and drop the actions on the, on the interface builder. Or you can run SCN action by code. Uh, you repeat the code by using repeat forever and SCN action, and you apply it to the node by run action. And this is the effect that you have when you have a rotating action, for example. And that's it. Thank you very much. Have a good one. <laughs>